Hi, I'm Keith Trim, and I'm here with Les Ward, who is the president of the Jefferson County Historical Society, including this building, the Rock Island Depot and Museum. Today we're going to talk about a little bit of history of Les and a little bit about the building. How are you doing, Les? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Great. So, Les, um, how long have you been involved with the um, Rock Island Museum? I retired from uh, Southern Pacific in uh, 1995, and I came back to February, and immediately got involved uh, with the Rock Island Museum and the Jefferson County Historical Society. I uh, like the, I worked here all my life and I like the railroad. Well, what's your history as a railroader? I hired out in 1956 uh, as a brakeman, trainman, and uh, spent two years in the Army and came back in 61 and kept working here until the railroad closed down. Then I went down to uh, Pratt, Kansas, and helped. Uh, that was part of the Rock Island Railroad that the Southern Pacific took over, and helped uh, rebuild it. I worked all the way from St. Louis, Missouri, to Tucumcari, New Mexico, on the Southern Rock Island Line, which they call the uh, Cotton Belt Line. Uh, there's another name for it too, but anyway, Golden Route, Golden State Route. What was your position? Uh, down there, I was uh, conductor and brakeman, uh, wherever they needed me the most. My first trip down to Pratt, I think I went out as a conductor. Had no idea where I was going to do, where I was going, what I was going to do, but we made it. I was lucky enough to have a, a fellow brakeman that knew the road, and he was a switchman from Kansas City, and he lived in Hutchison, Kansas, and uh, so that made the trip a lot easier. So what was it like being on the railroad back then? A lot different than it is today. Uh, when I hired out, you had a five-man crew, engineer and fireman, and conductor and two brakemen. A brakeman rode in the head end, so there were three men in the head end and two on the caboose. Uh, our main job was we did a lot of switching and uh, setting out and picking up and things like that, and that was our brakeman's main job was doing that and then watching the train, make sure nothing was happening. Today you have two men on the head end, and that's it. They, of course, they have uh, hot box detectors and motion detectors and dragging detectors all along the line, kind of take take the place of the human eye. So, uh, what can you tell us about this building? Uh, <clears throat> the building was built in 1914, primarily for the offices of the superintendent and the Western District. Western Division uh, officials. Uh, before the building was built, they had offices uptown in various different places. Uh, it was also the passenger depot. And uh, I don't remember what year, but the freight depot burnt down, so they consolidated the two. And and uh, when I hired out, why we didn't have much passenger business left, mostly freight downstairs. I think we had, did have a ticket. Yeah, the passenger train didn't go off, I think, to 68. In 95, I came back in 96. Uh, I don't remember just exactly what year the Historical Society got the building. Uh, they got the building for a dollar, and I didn't think we'd ever see what it is today. It took a lot of hard work and lots of money. And uh, well, But it's been a challenge, but it's also been a, a lot of fun uh, getting it. Uh, restored and. Is there any? I was looking at the pictures downstairs on the board. Is there any good little stories about this place? Anything happened in particular? <laughs> I can, <laughs> I can tell a lot of stories, but probably not on a video. <laughs> oh yes, we had uh, one one story I can remember. Uh, we got stuck in a snowbank at uh, Otego, Kansas. Uh, just west of Mankato. Uh, we, we took a snowplow west out of here and we got the bell wheel and said that 81 had got stuck at Otego and and uh, burnt rails up. And we had to go out and they had pulled the train back out of the way but we had to go out and see if we couldn't get the track cleared and so we could get on through. And we went along and, and we had no idea where we was at what we was doing and 
and we hit the broken rail and and uh, I thought we was going to turn the caboose upside down. But we didn't, but we got stuck. We couldn't back up because there wasn't no railroad and we couldn't go ahead because of a big snow bank. And there we sat for, I think, uh, 36 to 48 hours. I don't remember just how long, but it was an awful long time sitting in a snow bank. Really? And we used, we smelled the snow for water and uh, everybody knew we was going on a snow plow, so we took lots of goodies in our grips. So we didn't really go hungry or thirsty. But it was a cold and miserable day and a half. I see. So one of the uh, highlights of this facility is your train set. And we're going to take a little tour of it. Uh, give me some background on your model railroading. Uh, when the Rock Island uh, quit in 1980, uh, I bought a model railroad set, one of them kids' toys. And I put it up in my basement. And that wasn't there big enough, so I kept adding to it. And then when we went down to, when I went to Pratt, I worked in various different towns, and wherever there was a model railroad shop, I'd buy a, a car or an engine or something, and that's how I started collecting everything I got. One, one day in, in uh, Pratt, Kansas, I was working on my railroad in the basement down there, and I decided I needed some parts and some track or something, so I drove to Wichita, which I think was 80 or 90 miles, to the train shop and picked up my parts and drove home, and my wife didn't even know I was gone. <laughs> so I, I, I really got excited in it. One time I was, uh, I was laid off work down at Pratt, and uh, my wife said I'd work 12 hours a day for four days that in my railroad. So it was, it's been a lot of fun. And Did you know approximately how big it is or how much is invested in it? Or? No, I don't want to know how much I invest in it. <laughs> how many rooms does it fill here? Three rooms. The elevator takes out part of one room, but uh, it's, it's three rooms. It was uh, a chief dispatcher's office and the, and the train dispatcher's office and the superintendent's office. And uh, that's what it takes up now. Uh, I know a lot of kids come and look at it, uh, scout troops and stuff. Um, how's it go over? Really good. I haven't uh, been down here enough uh, in the last year or two years. I'm st going to start uh, coming down the second Saturday of every month and run trains, hopefully some more than that. And I want to start a club and get more people interested in it and really get this active. We also have a, a miniature train outside down uh, east of here that we give kids rides on. And we need to we need to get that running more and, and working with it. And I just haven't had time and kind of lost interest. Okay, well, um, I do appreciate the interview and I um, hope all the folks at home enjoy watching this. And this is Les Ward, president of the Jefferson County Historical Society, and he's down here at the Rock Island Depot Museum. Thanks, Les. Thank you, Keith.